good to be with you all as we do start this Lenten journey together. We'll remember 2021 well, just like we will have remembered 2020 well. This service, is, as Jake has said, is meditative, and you'll note that following the meditation that uh, Reverend Mickey provides, there'll be a time of silence. Interestingly, I've, I've had several experiences of being in silence with groups of people on Zoom, and I have found it uh, quite stirring, actually. It's kind of intense. We won't prolong it, but I just want to prepare you for it. That comes towards the end of the service. And as Jake said, uh, please be muted throughout the service, but wherever you are, join in the bold type so that uh, your place becomes a sanctuary of grace. And we begin. We light a candle in the name of God who created life. We light a candle in the name of the Son who loves life. And we light a candle in the name of the Holy Spirit. Who is the fire of life. Glory to God, our creator, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever, world without end. Amen. Let us pray. Holy God, rich in kindness, we ask you to be with us this night, so that we may draw closer to you in holiness and closer to each other in repentance. We remember all who have been hurt by the selfish acts of others. We pray for all victims of our broken social order, for those scared by new and old wars, for refugees and those hungry and in despair, for those harmed by lies and blighted by false values, for the poor and the homeless, and for all those who have no access to the world's abundant resources. Righteous God of love, we often work against you, against one another, and against ourselves. Yet over against our broken ways, you have set Christ, in whom you have entered the human history, reconciling the world to yourself. For this, we join our hearts in gratitude and hope, knowing of your tender care, especially in these days of chaos, dislocation, and disease. Holy One, we claim your abounding grace, and we ask your blessing. In our fear, we ask for courage. In our ignorance, we ask for wisdom. In our brokenness, we ask for healing. In our isolation, we ask for your intimate companionship. We ask to trust you above all things and to love in the manner that Jesus taught. We pray in his name, amen.
O oh God, you have searched me out and known me. You know my sitting down and my rising up. You discern my thoughts from afar. You trace my journeys and my resting places and are acquainted with all my ways. Indeed, there is not a word on my lips, but you, O oh God, know it all together. You press upon me behind and before, and you lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is so high that I cannot attain to it. Where can I go then from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I climb up to heaven, you are there. If I make the grave my bed, you are there also. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand will lead me and your right hand hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness will cover me and the light around me turn to night, darkness is not dark to you. The night is as bright as the day. Darkness and light to you are both alike. For you yourself created my inmost parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I will thank you because I am marvelously made. Your words are wonderful and I know it well. My body was not hidden from you while I was being made in secret and woven in the depths of the earth how deep I find your thoughts, O oh God. How great is the sum of them. Search me out, O oh God, and know my heart. Try me and know my restless thoughts. See whether there be any wickedness in me and lead me in the way that is everlasting. Mm -hmm.
Our scripture reading this evening is from the Gospel of John, the eighth chapter, verses two through 11. Early in the morning, he came again to the temple. All the people came to him and he sat down and began to teach them. The scribes and the Pharisees brought a woman who had been caught in adultery and making her stand before all of them, they said to him, teacher, this woman was caught in the very act of committing adultery. Now in the law, Moses commanded us to stone such women. Now, what do you say? They said this to test him so that they might have some charge to bring against him. Jesus bent down and wrote with his finger on the ground. When they kept on questioning him, he straightened up and said to them, let anyone among you who is without sin be the first to throw a stone at her. And once again, he bent down and wrote on the ground. When they heard it, they went away one by one, beginning with the elders. And Jesus was left alone with the woman standing before him. Jesus straightened up and said to her, woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? She said, no one, sir. And Jesus said, neither do I condemn you. Go your way, and from now on, don't sin again. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. The reflection comes from Monsignor Ocar Romero, the patron saint of the Americas, who was killed celebrating mass and who stood for social justice. He reflects on the gospel passage and says, how easy it is to denounce structural injustice, institutional violence, social sin. And it is true, this sin is everywhere. But where are the roots of this social sin? In the heart of every human being. Present day society is a sort of anonymous world in which no one is willing to admit guilt and everyone is responsible. Because of this, salvation be begins with the human person, with human dignity, with saving every person from sin. Individually, there are among us here no two sinners alike. Each one has committed his or her own shameful deeds. And yet we want to cast our guilt on the other and hide our own sin. I must take off my mask. I too am one of them. And I need to beg God's pardon because I have offended God and society. This is the call of Christ. How beautiful the expression of that woman upon finding herself pardoned and understood. No one, sir, no one has condemned me, then neither do I who could, could give that truly convincing word, neither do I condemn. But be careful, brothers and sisters, since God has forgiven us so many times, let us take advantage of that friendship with the Lord, which we have recovered, and let us live it with gratitude. I'll simply read a prayer that reflects on this from Ken Gire. Dear Lord Jesus, I confess with shame that there are times I have stood in the midst condemned and there are times I have stood in the crowd condemning. There are times my heart has been filled with adultery and there are times my hands have been filled with stones. Forgive me for a heart that is so pr prone to wander, so quick to forget my vows to you. Forgive me too for my eagerness in bringing you the sins of others and my reluctance in bringing you my own. Forgive me for the times I have stood smugly, pharisaic and measured out judgment to others. Others I am not qualified to judge, Others who you, though qualified, refuse to. Help me to be more like you, Jesus, full of grace and truth. 
Help me to live not by law, but by grace. By the spirit of compassion you showed to that woman so many mornings ago. Give me, I pray, the pierced conscience of the older ones in regard to the stumblings of others, so my hands may be first to drop their stones and my feet first to leave the circle of the self-righteous. Thank you for those sweet words of forgiveness. Neither do I condemn you. Words that flow so freely from your lips. Words that I have heard so often when I have stumbled. And in the strength of those unmerited words, help me to go my way and sin no more. Amen. And join me, friends, as we offer a blessing. Lord, it is night. The night is for stillness. Let us be still in the presence of God. It is night after a long day. What has been done has been done. What has not been done has not been done. Let it be. The night is dark. Let our fears of the darkness of the world and of our own lives rest in you. The night is quiet. Let the quietness of your peace enfold us, all dear to us and all who have no peace. The night heralds the new dawn. Let us look expectantly to a new day, new joys, new possibilities. In the name of our God of life and love, we pray. Amen.